Top management is running around in circles knowing that they need to do something, but not really what. So Andre, following moves in the market, you've noted that investors adopt three behavioral patterns. Can you talk us through those behavior patterns? Yeah, over time we've come across so many companies grappling with uh, innovation's continued acceleration that we've been able to categorize these different behaviors as three separate animals. Each one reacts in very different manner when confronted uh, to the market shifts the, like those we're observing today. So could you go into a bit more detail, what's the first animal? The first animal is the ostrich. Uh, he likes to avoid confrontation by burying his head in the sand. The typical reaction of the ostrich company is, uh, we've been doing very well for over a generation, we don't see why this will change. Well, I've also heard, um, we've looked at all startups in our domain and none of them can do anything better than what we do today. And you disagree with this approach? I really like these ostriches, uh, while I think they are taking high risks, even though they declare themselves to be risk averse. I like to remind them that tens of thousands of medium to large hotels had a much better understanding of the hospitality market than Airbnb when they started renting out mattresses in living rooms. No hotel would have seen Airbnb as a threat. The same could be said of taxi companies that at the time uh, had a better understanding of the taxi market than Uber. So what message would you give to these self-recognized ostriches? Well, acknowledging a problem's existence is actually the first and most important step towards solving it. My advice would be to tackle the disruption whilst the company's finances are still in good shape and innovation initiatives are much easier to implement. The alternative is to wait and go through a restructuring process. This is usually so painful that the survivors will want to avoid repeating this at all costs and uh, will be more attentive to upcoming market changes in the future. And we've spoken about the first animal. What is the second animal? Well, after meeting a number of ostriches, we've also come across quite a few headless chickens. Uh, these are companies that are aware of the upcoming disruption uh, in their market uh, are in the midst of disruption themselves. They see uh, the earth parting below their feet, but don't quite know how to react. Top management is running around in circles, knowing that they need to do something, but not really what. Tons of energies are spent, but not towards a coordinated goal or direction. And what advice would you give to these companies? Well, there really needs to be a structured approach to innovation where the madness quietens down and we can align the energy and resources towards a well-identified goal. This is where an external view and proven methodologies can really help. And Andre, what is the final behavior? The last animal is the workhorse with which the truly effective innovative companies can identify. The workhorse is used to plow a large field and is powerful yet focused. The energy is directed by the plowman giving clear instructions and knowing that the task will take a certain time. At the end of the day, an important mission will have been identified and accomplished. So what advice would you give to the workhorses? Well here, the only thing I can say is congratulations. These companies have recognized a problem and are working diligently in a focused way to solve it. So it's exactly the type of environment uh, where we see our clients being the most effective, bringing innovation to market in an efficient and ordinary manner. Mobilizing both efficient internal resources and creating external innovation sources is a recipe for successful go-to-market strategies and staying ahead of the competition relevant to the market. So what is then brought to the workhorse companies? Well, by complementing internally driven innovation with outside sources, these companies can concentrate on the output of unstructured creative third-party innovation rather than the innovation process itself. Each party works in the most effective manner and brings their own strengths while mitigating their weaknesses. The outcome is a powerful innovation machine with great sourcing of proven ideas and top-notch execution of a go-to-market strategy. Well, that's all very interesting, so thank you so much for coming in today and sharing your insights. It's always a pleasure. That's all once again from myself and Andre, but to keep updated with all the latest market moves, do keep clicking back.